last 20 or 25 minutes the voice was not recorded because I think the battery of the mic died down. So you can still hear the first 45 minutes of the lecture but then subsequent voice you cannot hear it but you will still see things written on the board so maybe you can reconstruct what I was saying in the class. So today's topic is dynamic games. And uh, and what I'll be teaching today uh, about dynamic games differs. It doesn't differ conceptually from extensive form games, but in terms of representation and in terms of writing, it's going to be very control theoretic as opposed to how you would see in economics book. Okay, so if you pick up a controls book on game theory, you will see the formulation that I'm going to start on the board but if you pick up an economics book you will never see this formulation okay so what is a control so let me write it as a controls type formulation okay and since all of you have taken signals and systems or whatever a course of that nature you will kind of a understand what this formulation is. So there is a state of the system xt equals to xt plus 1 equals to ft xt u1t u2t wt. So let me explain what that is. So xt plus 1 is, by the way this is discrete time. Okay, so xt is state at time t. So what is a state? Uh, for a system, what is a state? So state is a variable of a system that transitions to the next state based on what the current state is. So the future state depends on the current state, the actions of the players and some exogenous noise. So WT is uh, noise uh, and U1T or UIT in general is action of player I. Okay. So the, the concept of state is is such that xt plus 1 depends on xt and the actions at time t and the noise at time t but it doesn't depend on xt minus 1 or u1t minus 1 or u2t minus 1 and so on okay so so that's the idea of a state of a dynamic system so if you look at the stock prices the prices tomorrow is going to depend on what the price is today but not on the prices that have happened in the past. If you look at the temperature of this room, the temperature in the next hour is going to depend on the temperature in this hour and whatever heat is added or subtracted from this particular classroom. Okay, So that's the meaning of state. So in some sense, the state at time, so not in some sense, so the state at time t plus 1 depends on the current state the current actions of the uh, players and some exogenous noise that is supposed to be independent of all other noises. Okay, Now, in this model, we haven't yet mentioned two things. The first thing is whether player 1 and player 2 are making measurements or not. And if indeed they are making measurements right, through some sensor, so we have temperature sensor, we have velocity sensor, we have GPS sensors, right? So we are making measurement of the state. So player one may or may not be making measurement of the state. So we need to specify that. And the second thing we need to specify is what information these players have. Okay? And measurement and information, they are two different things. So for instance, I could have my current measurement, but I could have the entire measurement history. Okay? I could have my current and I could have the entire measurement history, my measurement history, and I could have your measurement history. Okay, so what do I mean? So my x, so I define yit 
measurement of player i at time t okay and then i i t is information of player i at time t okay and we will assume that y i of t is some function of the state and some independent noise. This is your sensor noise. Okay, and almost all sensors that you may use in your life will always have some noise. So in particular, the GPS signal, that GPS sensor that you have on your phone, it has noise that uh, so if you look at your GPS signal, it's extremely noisy and in fact, it has accuracy of up to three or four meters or maybe even 10 meters, okay? And if you go to downtown areas, especially places like Chicago or places like New York, because of the amount of reflection of the GPS signals through all those taller buildings, you really have no way of figuring out where exactly you are standing based on your GPS signal because it's so much noisier in those environments, okay? So there is always some sensor noise especially in control systems and, and so your measurement may not be accurate description of the state. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the, informa the information structure okay. So you could have an open loop structure where i i t was equal to x1, okay? So you measure the initial state and that's it, okay? You don't have any other information whatsoever. Then you have closed loop perfect state where your information is x1 to xt. <coughs> you have closed loop imperfect state sorry y1 t Y, no, Y I T, Y I 1, and you have closed loop feedback okay and so on. You can have multiple information structures in different games, okay? Uh, you also have information sharing, so uh, K step delayed observation sharing where I, I, T is equal to Y I one Y I T and then Y minus I one Y minus I T minus T. Okay. So in this kind of information structure, each player remembers its own observation history but it gets the information of other players with a delay of k time step. Okay, so this is observation sharing. And then you have perfect recall where i i t would be y i 1, y i t 
and u i 1 u i t minus 1. Okay, so this is your perfect recall and perfect recall is something that we have studied in the in the past. <coughs> Maybe not with the observation noise, but uh, but we have seen this uh, information structure before. So in perfect recall, each player remembers whatever it knows, in whatever it has observed in the history, and it also knows what, however it has acted in the past. Okay, so both the information is available with the uh, with the player, and you can construct more sophisticated information structures depending upon the problem at hand. Okay, so for instance. Johnny is working on a problem where there is an adversary and the adversary and the controller doesn't know much about the adversary. Okay, so it has to come up with an appropriate information structure for the problem that makes sense in that engineering setting. Okay. One thing that I want to note here is if you look at this k-step delayed observation sharing, you might argue that why should a controller send information to other players in the game, right? So one reason could be that they are all cooperative players, okay, they are not antagonistic. Uh, they all have a similar objective function, so the, it makes sense for them to send info, share information with each other, but there is a delay associated with communicating information to the other player, so that's one, op one reason. The other reason could be that player I can measure the state of the player J or other players through its own sensors, okay? So if you're looking at autonomous cars on the road, each car will have DSRC communication module, which is going to keep streaming the GPS information to other players on the road or other cars on the road, okay? So you, will, you might also have this because of government regulation or because of the technology or because you have a radar that can keep track of all the cars around you and so on and so forth, okay? So there are many reasons why you would have information structure of this type. It's not So having this information structure does not necessarily mean that the players are willingly sharing their information. They may be, or you could have your own sensors so as to extract information from, uh, extract information about other players from the environment. Okay, any questions so far? No, this this information, well you can, uh, so in this information structure K is well known to everyone, okay, it's common knowledge, but you can of course come up with more sophisticated information structure where K is unknown and it's a random variable, though it will be very hard to solve that problem. Okay. And then uh, I have to introduce the cost function and the strategy of player i. So let me introduce it here. So So you define gamma i equals to gamma i1 gamma i capital T. So I'm going to assume a finite horizon. Capital T is my horizon length. Okay, so there are only capital T number of time steps, okay? So gamma i is a, so gamma is a strategy of player i which connects, which is a T tuple where gamma i T maps the information to a probability distribution over the action set. Okay, this is the script I T, which uh, is the set of all information, all possible information of player I at time T. Okay, so this is this is information space. And this is your uh, behavioral 
action or you can also call it as probability distributions over actions. Okay, so that would be a strategy of player I. So again, now we are going to differ in the cost function with respect to what you will see in economics books. So remember in the tree, in this extensive form, the payoffs are accrued only at the end. Okay, When the game has finished, then you accrue the payoff depending upon which leaf node you are standing at. Uh, in controls problem, as well as in many other problems in uh, communications, you have cost function where you accrue something over a period of time. You accrue cost or you accrue rewards over a period of time. So the cost function that I'm going to assume, uh, C of x1, so or rather let me just write it as a cost of player i. is equal to summation t equals 1 to capital T of C i t which depends on x t, u 1 t and u 2 t. If you have multiple players you can keep adding uh, more actions here. Okay, So there is a nice structure here in the cost where the cost I am going to accrue at time t doesn't depend on the cost that I am going to accrue at time t plus 1. You could have completely independent cost across time. Okay, so especially in tracking problems that one uses in control, so you have a trajectory, you have a trajectory, so this is Earth, this is Moon, and say you want to follow this trajectory from Earth to Moon, then in tracking problem you want to minimize the deviation from this, from this path. Okay, so you might be, your vehicle might be going along, your spacecraft might be going along this direction, but you, at every point of time, it is going to take control effort so as to come back to this trajectory eventually. Okay, so these tracking problems can be cast in this particular framework. Okay, any questions so far? So now I am going to. Uh, I'm going to get this game into normal form by lifting this problem of minimizing cost with respect to action to finding an appropriate set of strategies which will be in equilibrium with each other. So I'm going to use Ji, which is a function of gamma 1 and gamma 2 to be expected value of this cost function C i t x t u 1 t u 2 t such that u i t equals gamma i t i i t. This is, this is not conditioning, this is just saying that well u i of t has to be a function of the information only. It can't be a function of some other variables that are not observed by the player. for all i and for all t. And I am taking expectation with respect to which random variables, I am taking expectation with respect to w, I am taking expectation with respect to vits. Okay, so that completes the description of a general game. Uh, uh, a general discrete time dynamic game. Oh, and Nash equilibrium, gamma 1 star, gamma 2 star, 
is Nash equilibrium if and only if J1 gamma 1 star gamma 2 star is less than or equal to J1, okay? And Okay, so that completes the description of the game. So I have, so what do I have to do when I want to define a game? I have to have some notion of state of the system. I have to figure out what the action sets of the players are. I need to, I need to figure out whether there is actuation noise or not, whether there is some sort of exogenous noise that's disturbing the system state or not. So in case of aircrafts, wind disturb the trajectory of these, of the aircrafts. If you're looking at uh, a car, if, you are, if the road is slippery or if the friction coefficient of road is not sufficient, then there is some sort of slip in the car and that, that is, can be modeled in this way. If you have a model of a system, but that's not an accurate model of the system, you can, sub, I mean, you can assume that the model is correct, but it has some sort of uncertainty and you just model the, and what you have done is instead of coming up or putting in more effort to create a better model of the system, you have just added a noise term to the state transition function so as to account for the unmodeled uncertainty within the system, okay? And of course, sensor noise, we have seen what the examples of sensor noise is, okay? So any question with that? So we need to know all this. And then we need to come up with the information structure of the game and we need to know what the cost of player i is going to be and that's it, the game, the description of the game will be complete immediately, okay? Now what do I have to do? I have to solve this game and figure out what a Nash equilibrium for this game would be. I don't understand how we take the expectation with respect to two variables. Not two, it's all, the history of entire W's and the history of entire VITs. Well, they are, all, they are all considered independent of each other. So yes, yes. It, the joint will be just multiplication of individual uh, distributions, okay? So a naive and uh, somewhat incorrect approach, so I will start with a naive and incorrect approach, is to use dynamic programming. Are all of you familiar with dynamic programming? No? Few of you? Okay. So let me tell you what dynamic programming is. Are all of you familiar with backward induction? No, backward induction. Have you heard of backward induction? No? <laughs> okay. Well, we will cover that in the, in the optimization class, but let me give you a brief summary of what dynamic programming is. based uh, approach and I should mention here that does not work most of the time. Okay, so just because I'm using dynamic programming and it, it's, it works very well in controls in the single person optimization problem doesn't mean that it's going to work very well for this class of problems. So in dynamic programming based approach, the first thing I do is define the value at time capital T as a function of information at capital T. Okay, so this is my value. I'm going to call it my value. Value of player i at time t is i i so it is a function of the information of player i at time t, which is min of gamma i, min over all possible 
behavioral strategies of the expected value of C i capital T of x t u 1 t and u 2 t where u 2 t is a function of gamma 2 capital T of i 2 capital T. Well, you know what? I will just write u 2 t here. Gamma 2 star capital T of I 2 T given I 1 capital T. Okay, so here I am conditioning the expected cost given the information to player I. Okay, and this would be the Nash equilibrium. So what you have to do is find the minimum of this. This is the is play. Oh, well, let me make it first pair. Okay, and let's let's do the same thing for second player. Expected value of C one, C two of t, x t, gamma one star t, i one t gamma 2 star no comma u2 of t given i2 of t okay so one thing that i want to uh, so so how would you solve this problem well you predict what the other player is going to do right and then you come up with your best response and the same thing happens for player 2 and then wherever the best responses are going to meet that will be the equilibrium strategy right so how do you solve using dynamic programming you look at the last stage game first okay and then you proceed backward so this will be the last stage and by the way the argmin here would be your gamma 1 star t and the argmin here would be gamma 2 star t and then at time t you will you will define v i of t as min of gamma i of t expected value of c i t x t u i of t and gamma minus i star of t i minus i star of t given i i of t oh by the sorry i have to add the future cost as well v i of t plus 1 i i of t plus 1 how do i shift this entire thing uh, given i i of t okay so this is given i i of t there should not be any star here okay so given the strategy of the other player and the information of the well you are not given the information right you have to make the you have to do the conditional expectation of the other player's information given your information Right, so this is something like Bayesian game, where you do the conditional expectation given your type. What's the possible set of actions that the other player is going to take, and you do the expected cost. You do the you compute the conditional expected cost and solve the problem. Right. So, so what I want to ask you is, what's the problem with this approach? Okay, it works in many cases but not always okay and this this situ this this way of solving a problem is known as dynamic programming you solve the final stage then you solve the stage t minus 1 by adding the final stage value here in the cost in the cost to go function 
right? And then you solve t minus 1, then you solve t minus 2 and proceed backward all the way to time 1, okay? This is known as dynamic programming. But so my question is, why would it fail? So this is a naive approach. Why would it fail? Yes. Uh, I guess like to solve it the last stage, we have to come up with the gamma 1, gamma 2 stuff, right? Right. And if we somehow can find them exactly and approximate it, then error would propagate via these. No, assume that we are going. We, I mean, assume that we have some genie who can tell us what the gamma one star, gamma two star t is. And then we know v. Exactly. Then we know v, v i t exactly. So his point is, if we are not able to compute it exactly, then this error is going to propagate down the line, right? I mean, this is true. This is going to happen. But assume that, for the time being, assume that we are able to solve this problem exactly. What's the problem with that? with this approach. So what was the idea in Bayesian game, right? So at every point of time, I'm transforming this original game into a Bayesian game where this information becomes my type. I mean, I1t becomes player 1's type and I2t becomes player 2's type, right? And we are trying to solve this this problem, this conditional expectation. Uh, we are trying to minimize this set of conditional expectations. What's, so what is this assumption in the Bayesian game that kind of breaks down here in this dynamic setting? Beliefs have to be consistent. Sorry? Beliefs have to be consistent. Beliefs have to be consistent. OK. Why does that break down? You see, the way we have come up with I2T is through this long process where we have made decisions at time one, time two, time three, time four, and so on. Okay, and same thing with player two. Player two has made decisions at time one, time two, time three, time four, and so on. Now, the problem here is, I don't know what strategy player two has used. So if I'm player one, I don't know what strategy player two has used in the past. Right? Because at this point of time, I have not specified what strategies player two has used in the past. Right? I have not specified it. So I don't know what strategy player two has used. And so I cannot form a consistent belief on what the distribution over I2 of t is in particular. And I don't know what the distribution over I2 of t is given my type or given I1 of t. Same thing, I cannot come up with a distribution over xt given i1 of t, okay? Because we have not shared any information about what strategy I'm going to use and what strategy the other player is going to use, okay? So answer is consistency of beliefs breaks down. That is not to say that you cannot solve using this approach. Okay, there are many cases where you can solve it because this consistency of, consistency of beliefs does not break down. But in most cases where you have weird information structures or very natural information structures, this might just break down. So how should we fix this problem? I mean, what I'm saying is consistency of belief is breaking down, so how should I go about fixing this problem? What can I do to fix this inconsistency in belief? So why do we have inconsistency in belief? It's because we haven't shared our previous strategies with the other player, okay? So somehow in this dynamic setting, the belief has to be consistent with these strategies that, the, that all the players have used in the past and the strategies as you can see, strategies have to, consistent, have to be consistent with the beliefs that you have formed based on what strategies other players have used in the past. Okay, it's a convoluted statement. Beliefs depend on strategies. Strategies depend on beliefs. Okay, so the strategy at time t, gamma 1 star t and gamma 2 star t, 
it depends on what belief you have on xt and i2 of t given i1 of t and the belief on xt and i2 of t given i1 of t depends on what strategies players have used at time t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3 all the way up to time t equals to 1. Okay, so there is, so that's the next, uh, next thing which is to fix this problem. I have to fix this problem. Even though you might, if you have, if you have done an optimization class, you would note that this problem doesn't occur in single person decision problem because if you are, if there is only one person, he knows what strategies he has used until now. But if there are two people, you now have to start sharing strategies because you don't know what the other person has used in the past. So the topic is sequential equilibrium. Okay, and let me use gamma vector to denote gamma 1 and gamma 2. Okay, and if you have n players, you will have gamma 1, 2 all the way up to gamma n. I have a thought that uh, the problem is it's not cool to like We try to get the uh, strategies before the, we play the game. Mm -hmm. And we, we started from the uh, end stage. Right. But we haven't been to this stage yet. So the problem that right. we, at this time we don't have the strategies and we actually don't have the information necessary to, to solve the last thing. So maybe if we can solve like a, a get a uh, stick every possible strategy that we can play with mm -hmm. and then solve it uh, as an active deduction until we get to the point the, to the first stage mm -hmm. at that point we will kind of have a, an idea of what are the strategies right so the way I'm going to define so your point is that it seems like non-causal because at time t you don't know what strategies has happened in the past right but if you think about it, it's not really non-causal because the strategies have already been taken in the past. In fact, even before the game starts, both players are going to act according to Nash equilibrium. So in some sense, are, there is no incentive for them to deviate. So in some sense, you know what strategies they are going to use in this particular game. Okay. So at time t, you know what strategies they have taken at time t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3. And in fact, at time t minus 3, you know what strategies they are going to take at time t minus 2, t minus 1, and at, at capital T. Okay? The states depend, like they have some noise, uh, and the noise will, get, will, will be modded. Right. And they have to happen first, and, and then this, uh, the second player will take one. Sorry, what, what's your question? So the, the, the say that the first player uh, sets his strategy. Uh -huh. uh, the second player knows it. Right. Uh, it's still uh, there's some uncertainty in the state information. Right. That have to be more or would have to be taken care of. It will be taken care of because if so, if I am the second player and you are the first player and you have acted at time one and I am acting at time two, I we have. We haven't agreed upon the Nash equilibrium, but say there is a Nash equilibrium in the game and we are going to play according to that. Then I know what your strategy is, okay, and then based on that I can, I can create a belief on the state of the system because I know what your strategy is. Okay, so to give you an example, let's say your x2 is f1 of x1 and gamma2 or gamma 1, you are player 1, gamma 1 of some x1, okay? And all I observe is x2, okay? So how would I come up with uh, belief on x1? So if I have observed x2, then the probability that x1 equals to A given x2 equals to B, what would this be? 
what would this be? If I don't know gamma 1, I don't know what, the, what this conditional probability is going to be. But if I know gamma 1, then I, I can figure it out by looking at the probability that x2 is equal to b given x1 is equal to a, probability that x1 is equal to a over probability that x2 is equal to b. Right? This is the usual Bayes, Bayes rule. Okay. If I didn't know gamma one, this nothing, none of this is going to work because I don't know what what this conditional probability is. Right? But because I know gamma one, I can figure this out exactly, and I can come up with this conditional probability. Okay, so knowing this strategy is a useful thing. So if I'm player two, knowing this strategy, which strategy you have used at time one is a useful thing. But somehow we cannot share the strategy that this is my strategy so that you can form the belief. So somehow the definition of Nash equilibrium has to take into account that everybody is going to use their belief to compute the strategy and everybody's belief is going to depend on the strategies themselves. Okay, so you have this weird uh, cyclic uh, issue, but it so turns out that an equilibrium would exist nonetheless in these classes of games. And let me define so let me define the belief by it that depends on gamma which is the probability over xt and i minus it given iit okay and this conditional probability depends on what strategy players have used. You know, if I want to be more correct, I should really write it as gamma 1, 2, and 1, 2, t minus 1. Okay, that's the correct way of writing it because the probability doesn't depend on the future strategies, it depends on the past strategies. So this is my belief that depends on the past strategies and what I want is a definition. So the definition is gamma i star t is or I, I want to say gamma star is sequentially rational with respect to belief pi okay sometimes people write it as belief system because it's not a single belief but it's a sequence of beliefs that you are going to form over the entire time is when gamma star no gamma i star t to capital T is an argument of gamma i t to capital T expected value of summation C s s equals to t to capital T x s u 1 s u 2 s given U K S equals to gamma K S I K S for all K 
not equal to i. And I also need I also need to give as input the belief system pi. Okay, because all this future expectation will be computed using this belief system pi. Okay, it's a f I, I don't expect you to understand or parse through this uh, statement in a single go uh, because it's really a very complicated argument where I'm saying that well I have a belief system pi which defines this conditional probability at every point of time and I'm saying that a sequence of strategies is sequentially rational with respect to this belief system if the sequence of strategies form it's the it's the minimizing strategy assuming others are going to act according to this strategy and the belief system is given to me okay so that this 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 set of strategies are actually minimizing the future expected cost so this is the future future cost okay so in expectation, these strategies are minimizing the future cost given the belief system and given the strategies of all other players. So that's one part of the picture. Now I have to tell you the other part of the picture, which is which is that the beliefs now have to be consistent with gamma star so that's the next uh, uh, next definition belief pi is weakly consistent with gamma star if pi i t gamma star uh, is equal to probability under gamma star of i i t I minus I T over probability I I T. For probability of gamma star I I T greater than zero. Okay, so that's the definition of weak consistency and there is problem with this weak consistency also uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, so we started with dynamic programming. We realized that well the consistency of belief is kind of problematic in dynamic programming. So somehow the equilibrium has to define in a consistent manner. So how do we define the equilibrium? So well we have to come up with two definitions. The first is the strategy has to be sequentially rational with respect to a belief system, right? Such that the strategy, when I truncate it from time t to capital T, it should form the equilibrium for the subsequent game starting at time t. So that's one idea. And the second idea is, well, the belief has to be weakly consistent with the strategies that you have chosen so that it reflects the true conditional belief assuming that, that those strategies were played over the entire duration 
but only for those information sets that have positive probability under that strategies, under the strategies that have been chosen by the players. Okay. Now what happens when, when some information sets are, have zero probability under the equilibrium strategy? What happens at those, what happens at those nodes in this extensive form game? Any, any thoughts? I mean, that, that is actually the problem with this definition, okay? Because we cannot come up with a belief for information sets that are going to occur with zero probability, okay? Uh, to, to give you an example of why this is, why this is a, a, a problem, let's say I'm, here is a criminal, okay? And he has the option of kill, and not kill a person and there is a government okay so not killing the person will give him a smaller uh, some sort of dissatisfaction okay <laughs> so so it's going to give him some sort of dissatisfaction which is a which is a negative payoff but there is a government who is going to catch this criminal and will give him a capital punishment or will him will just give that person just a small fine okay but this fine is strictly lower than the, the, the discomfort that this player will, will accrue because of not killing the, the enemy, okay? So in this case, if you look at this game and put in the payoff matrices appropriately, you will find that the government will always give capital punishment or life imprisonment, you know, some very harsh, harsh punishment, okay? So that will, deter this criminal from killing the person okay if the capital punishment is is harsh enough for this criminal then the criminal will never take this path okay the question now is suppose how would you form belief so in in this case the probability that this node will will occur the probability that this information set would appear has zero probability right so how would you form the belief at this particular node because the player is never going to take an action of killing the person killing the enemy okay it's always going to take this not kill action but somehow the beliefs have to be defined at this particular node right and if you don't define in fact the belief has to be defined also because you want to understand why would what is going to deter the criminal from killing this person Okay, if the fine was low enough and somehow you define gamma star is sequentially rational uh, and you define the gamma star of the government as just giving a fine, right? It, if this occurs with zero probability, then that path will never be taken in the game, right? And there will be a problem with defining an equilibrium. In fact, it will be an equilibrium, but it's not a credible equilibrium. There is some problem with this equilibrium. We know it. We know it because we know that none of the governments across the world gives only a small fine for someone to kill somebody else. Okay, it's always a very harsh punishment. The harshest punishment people get is because of killing someone else. Okay, so there is something, some problem with this kind of uh, situation. So that gets me to the next definition. That pi is fully consistent if there exist gamma k that converges to gamma star, okay? But uh, this is a sequence. So this is not a player's, how do I denote a sequence in gamma? So let me write it as gamma k, but remember this k is a sequence, okay? Yeah, k goes to infinity. As k goes to infinity, 
such that gamma i t k of i i t is strictly positive. Okay, so this is where trembling hand. Okay, so at every point of time, you have a trembling hand. Okay, so every player has a trembling hand. So every action gets a positive probability. Every action gets a positive probability, and we have pi k converging to pi this pi. Okay, then you call the belief to be fully consistent with gamma star. Fully consistent with respect to gamma star. Okay, and this is the right way to form a belief. Okay, this is a consistent way of forming a belief because you assume that every player is going to make a mistake with some small probability, small positive probability. And what I am going to do is look at the limit of those beliefs that are formed in the limit. Okay, and it's going to converge to something uh, which will be the consistent, the fully consistent belief with respect to this set of strategies. Okay, in this case it was weakly consistent because you never assumed or you never assumed that the players are going to tremble with certain probability. Okay, so here we are assuming that players are going to tremble with certain probability and as I take that probability going to zero, probability of trembling going to zero, my beliefs are going to converge to some set of beliefs and that's going to be fully consistent with gamma star. And now sequential equilibrium is defined as a tuple of belief and gamma star so that the belief is consistent, fully consistent with gamma star and gamma star is sequentially rational with respect to the belief. Okay? So this is in some sense a fixed point in both the belief space and the strategy space. Okay? So I write sequential Gamma star phi is sequential equilibrium if gamma star is sequentially rational with respect to pi and pi is fully consistent with respect to gamma star. And for most of the problems, you will never be able to compute sequential equilibrium ever. Okay, it's such so difficult to compute sequential equilibrium for arbitrary general problem. Okay, is that clear? But it's important that the, the reason why I'm talking about sequential equilibrium and we probably pretty much spend the entire class talking about sequential equilibrium is because these, these classes of games appear more often than cases where you have perfect information, perfect recall and so on and so forth. So those nice things never, I mean, not always those nice things would appear and so you will always be in this case and then you will have to make modifications of appropriate nature in order to be able to compute sequential equilibrium, if at all you want to compute it. Yeah. My question is related to what you said. Since it's difficult to compute, so what is the way of defining it? Because, uh, I mean, we will do a sequential equilibrium of signaling game, okay, in the next class. So there are some specific toy problems, example problems where you can do it. But it's not in the full-blown generality that it's very hard to compute sequential equilibrium. Okay, but but it is it is a way to uh, 
this sequential equilibrium is a way to think about how people actually make decisions in real life, right? In a dynamic setting where there is scarcity of information. Okay, you have to make decision under limited information. How are you going to make decision? Well, you are going to assume that people are going to tremble. Based on that, you will make some belief. And then based on that, you will come up with some strategy that is sequentially rational. Okay, and the reason why this is this assumption is imposed or this, this, uh, this restriction is imposed in this dynamic problem is because suppose you acted according to some strategy until time t, it is in your best response, it's in your best interest to actually stick to whatever the equilibrium strategy is, assuming others are going to stick to their equilibrium strategy too. Otherwise what will happen, which is the next topic, time consistency, otherwise what will happen is Every time you proceed in the game, you will start reevaluating your strategy and making changes in your strategy, which is not good. I mean, there is, in some sense, that's not an equilibrium because you're changing your strategy at every point of time. That's not, that's not good. Okay, and we'll, that's the next topic of time consistency. Okay, so time consistency is uh, is defined as follows. So every player has acted according so gamma minus i star. So players minus i <coughs> played according to equilibrium. Then, definition A strongly time consistent is gamma star T to T or gamma I star T to T is the best response. of the truncated game. Okay, that's a strongly time consistent. There's no incentive for you to change your strategy in the truncated game. So if the game started at time t, there's no reason for you to change your strategy. Then B is weekly time consistent gamma i star t to t is best response assuming player i acted according to equilibrium equilibrium strategy before time t. Okay, so that's weekly time consistent. And depending upon how you are forming this belief, you could be strongly time consistent or weakly time consistent in this case. Okay, because the belief would change if you change your past strategy, if one person unilaterally changes its past strategy, the beliefs may or may not change. Okay, so if it changes, you are no more uh, a strongly time consistent. If the belief changes because player one has acted according to a non-equilibrium strategy in the past, before time t, then you may not have, then the original strategy need not be the equilibrium strategy. It need not, need not be minimizing this future expected cost. Okay? So the best class of results you can get in games are strongly time consistent because you know that if you start the game at any instant, no player will have an incentive to deviate. 
no matter how players have acted in the past. Okay? Weekly time consistent, on the other hand, needs the players to have acted according to the equilibrium strategy before time t in order for the future strategy to be best response. And then you have not, not time consistent or time inconsistent strategies which are not weekly time consistent. Okay, so they are time inconsistent. Okay, any question about that? Yeah. Can we have infinite quality? Can you have? Infinite quality. Infinite value. Oh, infinite horizon, yes, that will be covered in the next class. That's Markov games. Right. So and even there the problem of issue of time consistency would arise. Okay, so I want to give you an example. So I gave you the example of strongly time consistent and weakly time consistent. So depending upon whether this belief changes based on how players have acted before time t, you can have a weakly time consistent or a strongly time consistent strategy. But I'll give you an example where you have a time inconsistent strategy. So here is a player, yeah. Uh, so in this in this entire model, I have not assumed finite state space, and it's not needed. Okay. Uh, of course, in order to form beliefs, uh, so okay. One thing: sequential equilibrium has not been defined for infinite infinite state and action spaces. Okay. Uh, for finite spaces, sequential equilibrium is well defined, but the technique of solving the problem using backward induction can be done for infinite games as well. I mean, it will be very difficult to solve the problem, yes. Okay, we'll get to a way of simplifying this computation in the next class, or maybe next to next class. Okay, so here is an example. So I have a single person optimization, so there are no two people. Single person optimization, and he has some state xt equals ft of xt and ut, okay? Uh, so the state action and the state at the next time step. And his cost function is as follows. So his to overall cost is C1 of x1 comma u1 plus beta multiplied by delta of C2 x2 u2 plus delta square of multiplied by C3 x3 u3. Okay, say time t equals to 3. Okay, and delta is discount factor 0 to 1, beta is another discount factor between 0 to 1. This is known as hyperbolic discounting. This is known as hyperbolic bolic discounting. Okay, so what is this player trying to do? Okay, so in general, the way people make decision is that they discount the future. So what's going to happen to me tomorrow, uh, whatever cost I'm going to accrue, I will multiply it by delta. If it is day after tomorrow, I'll multiply it by delta square and I'll add it all up. So this beta is not there. I'll add it all up, right? And I'm going to minimize my expected cost, my expected future cost uh, given by picking an appropriate action at this point of time. In hyperbolic discounting, this person has some issues, okay? The issue is he lumps the future cost together, discounted future cost together, and multiplies it by another discount factor, beta, okay? 
And then this person makes a decision at time t equals to 1, which depends on his decision at time t equals to 2 and the decision at time t equals to 3, because you are going to solve this problem using backward induction. Okay? So you get some solution. However, if there is a beta term, if there was no beta term there, there is no, it's completely, it's strongly time consistent. That is, if player has chosen a strategy to use over the entire period of time, it has an incentive to stick to that strategy at all points of time, if beta was equal to 1. Now, in the presence of beta, when the player moves to time t equals to 2, he doesn't have any incentive to stick to the strategy that he had initially started with. Okay? So that leads to a time inconsistent behavior. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you an assignment based on hyperbolic discounting where you can see it uh, appearing as part of the solution where this person discounts, further discounts the future expected cost using a single discount factor beta. And then when the next time comes, there is no reason for the person to restrict himself to the strategy that he has committed to use at the beginning of the decision problem. So any question on the time inconsistency part? Yes. Yeah. Why isn't just discount the P delta for the next time step and B delta for the next time? I mean that is what it is. So this is the entire future cost. So yeah. So you said like that it's delta and delta square and then you just sold the total cost. Yes, so if you if beta is one, you solve this problem, then go back, solve this problem, then go back, solve this problem with the future value. As, yeah, so at the next time step, the player will not have any incentive to change the strategy. So if beta 1 will change it? Sorry, if beta 1? If beta 1 will change So if beta 1 will change it, 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 so if beta 1 at this is your stage stage 1 at stage 2 you want to minimize with respect to u2 and u3 c2 of x2 comma u2 plus beta delta of c3 of x3 comma u3 right Okay. So any discount factor will make... Uh, yes. No matter what the discount factor is, it will make... The player will not have an incentive to stick to the strategy that he had decided. So U2 star would be the strategy here, right? He will solve this entire problem. He'll figure out what U1 star is, U2 star is, U3 star is. But when he gets to the second stage, he will resolve this optimization problem and U2 star will not be equal to the U2 star here. Okay, they will be different. So that's what you will have to show in the assignment that these two, these two solutions give you, I mean, the two cases will give you a completely different answer uh, because of this hyperbolic discounting where the player uses a single discount factor to discount the entire future cost and that leads to time inconsistent behavior. Okay, so if you do see a person Playing according to a time inconsistent behavior, it means that probably has a hyperbolic discounting. He doesn't really care about the future as much as he cares about the present. Okay, but in a in a somewhat non-trivial way. Okay. All right. So the next assignment will be up pretty soon. Please start early, and uh, we'll meet next week. <laughs>